Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. And by popular demand, this is a quick video about just all the differences between the Galaxy S7 Edge and Galaxy S7, and maybe which one you would want to pick if you're torn. So this video can be pretty short because Samsung simplified their lineup a lot from last year, where they had a Galaxy S6, Galaxy S6 Active, Galaxy S6 Edge, and Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. This year, we just get two phones, Galaxy S7 and Galaxy S7 Edge. That's it. So first off, they're different sizes. Yes, the Galaxy S7 is a sort of a mid to large size phone with a 5.1 inch display, but the S7 Edge is firmly in big phone territory at 5.5 inches. And then everything else about the displays on paper is the same. So they're both these bright quality Quad HD Super AMOLED displays. And then of course, the, the larger display has a slightly lower pixel density number but you won't notice, they're both ridiculous. And the S7 Edge is rocking that curved glass on both sides, which earned it its name. The glass just kind of overflows over both edges. Now, something barely talked about besides the different screen sizes is some other dimensions. The Galaxy S7 Edge is 0.2 millimeters thinner and five grams heavier than the regular Galaxy S7. Now, being heavier makes sense since it's a bigger phone, but the bigger problem of the old S6 Edge was the sides being hard to hold since it felt kind of like a blade in the hand. But Samsung did some work with new shaping on the back and side metal rails here of the phone. They're different this year and it's not as hard to pick up or literally a pain to hold even when the edge is so thin. So the shape of the edge is still very much different from the regular S7, but it's less dramatic while still being easily one of the prettiest phones out there, hands down. Now, one of the other hardware things is the larger Galaxy S7 Edge also has a pretty significantly larger battery. Now, since it also has a bigger screen, the translation to battery life is a little less significant, but I actually do see a bit of a difference. I'd say maybe 10 to 15% longer battery life in the S7 Edge, thanks to the bigger battery. And that right there is enough of a reason for me to really like having the extra space inside. And then lastly, of course, with the curves on either edge of the display, Samsung built in some software into the S7 Edge to take advantage of it. And the software, is better than last year, but could still be better. Here's why. So it still has this tab to swipe out from the side to get to some shortcuts. And then you can keep swiping, of course, to move between different pages of different styles of shortcuts. So first of all, you can choose where exactly this tab is on your screen. It just kind of lives there. You can put it top right, top lower right, top left if you're lefty, bottom left, wherever you hold your hand, it's supposed to be easily accessible with your thumb. And you can have it be smaller, bigger, more or less transparent, even invisible, whatever. And then you can choose which edge panel shows up when you swipe. So if you don't want the contact shortcut to show up, you can just turn that off, or you can add stuff like a sports scores spoiler tab. Then there are a couple more things that aren't you know on by default, like weather and a compass. They're all disabled. But then there's a little mini store, a Samsung mini store, just for buying and downloading more of these tabs. There's only about like another dozen, but hey, if you find something you like, you can buy it. So Apps Edge is cool, right? It's just a couple shortcuts to your favorite apps from wherever you are. If you get into a certain app a lot, then you can always have it at your fingertips from just a thumb swipe in. You used to need a third party app to do that. Now it's built into the software. The next one over is called Task Edge, where you can add shortcuts to different actions within apps. So like switching, opening just the front facing camera or starting a stopwatch inside the clock app, stuff like that. Now, fun fact, years ago, way before this phone came out, I used to do exactly this on my Galaxy S3 with an app called Swipe Pad. Swipe Pad still exists today and still does all of this as good as the edge display feature here, if not better, because Samsung's version here, it only features a couple first party apps, nine to be exact, and some of them I don't even use. So I would love to be able to add third party apps, like opening up a new tweet function in my Twitter app, or a shortcut to open up the camera inside the Instagram app, or just little stuff like that, but I can't do any of that. None of them are supported. There is so much that could make this Tasks Edge section like my favorite Android skin feature ever, but I just don't think they even plan on adding support for third-party apps. So for now, it's just a couple of things that you may or may not even use. Anyway, past that, you have People Edge for your contacts, and you know, the Liahu sports thing, this favorite NBA or NFL or hockey or baseball or whatever sports teams you watch. And I threw in a calendar in there too for myself, but that's pretty much it. You can swipe between these tabs from wherever you are on the phone and they're quick and handy access. And that's about it for the Galaxy S7 Edge. 
a bit of software, a little bit of curvy glass that make this phone different from the regular S7, which has its own entire review, of course. Everything else is the same, from the camera, to the speakers, to the buttons, to the internal specs, both flagships in their own right. So at the end of the day, the answer to a question a lot of you guys were asking is which one I prefer between the Edge and the regular S7, and I definitely prefer the Edge for the two reasons. One, I have bigger hands, I usually use bigger phones, and two, I'm a bit more of a power user, and the larger battery is definitely a big help here. I would almost never recommend, actually, the regular S7 over the Edge unless you really don't like the Edge features or you have particularly small hands, but even then, the regular S7 is not the smallest phone in the world anyway. So yeah, I tend to recommend the Galaxy S7 Edge a lot more than I recommend the S7. That being said, thanks for watching this quick video. Let me know what you guys think, which one you guys like more in the comment section below that like button, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.